Well, I've not got to be that gracious. But I've never been accused of being gracious before, so I don't know why I should start now. Um, we had some qualified people uh, that rendered their names in tonight. Uh, I found this a, a little bit disturbing that council couldn't give the general public two weeks to chime in on such an important decision. I now find... So we'll um, keep going. I'd also like to congratulate the people who placed their names up for council consideration tonight. Uh, I find it unfortunate that council was not going to give the public time to chime in on uh, who they wanted to represent them. Uh, I sit at a table now being involved in active lawsuits against the city with half the council. Now, we had the opportunity to appoint other people who weren't suing the city. Yet, for some reason, there's an agenda that wanted this certain person on council. And I just find this to be a rather demoralizing day for the city that you now have half your council suing the city. Uh, I, I, I find that odd. I, maybe I, I'm, I'm alone in that feeling, but uh, those are my comments. Thank you. Mr. Pennell. <coughs> at, at times I wonder why I do this, and other times I really wonder why I do this. I, I apologize to the citizens uh, for not being as totally responsive as some feel that we should be. But, you know, things do happen. Uh, I'm not going to go into it as far as my personal life. Uh, you know, the only two comments I'd like to make, I'd, I'd like to thank those who came forward by, with telephone calls uh, expressing their interest and congratulating Ms. Lindblad on her seat. Um, the other thing I'd like to state, and, and I know this is going to be a tough one to swallow, but I really think that the people sitting at this table really ought to think twice with their communications. If we put as much effort into communicating with each other, and that includes you, your honorable mayor, as some of us at this table do on Geek Fest, we might actually get something done. Thank you. Ms. Balance. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to join my colleagues in, in thanking the people who stepped forward and to join us at the table. Um, knowing full well the slings and arrows we, we all suffer and, and sometimes we toss across the table at one another. Um, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Kirkpatrick for sharing his time with us and, and trying to lead this city in a healthy direction. I would like to say to the people that when things don't go the way pe the people think they should at this table, there are a few options to them. They can pass a referendum, a petition around, and 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 gets things added to the ballot so that people can vote on it. Um, sometimes that happens and, and that's good, that the people have, have a chance to let their voices be heard. Other times when things happen at this table and some people look at the law and they read the law and they speak to lawyers and they say, well, something went down here and I don't think it's right. What are my options? And, and one of the only options left at that point is for a concerned citizen to file a lawsuit. Now, when concerned citizens file lawsuits, it's not cheap. They're serious about it. And they're fighting a city that has, all, that has a, the, the municipal league on, on retainer. So people who care enough about something that they think is wrong, statutorily wrong, or, or constitutionally wrong, their only recourse left to them is to take it to court and fight it. It's not a personal thing against the people at the council table. It's a business thing. It's, it's a thing, it's how they can raise their voices to, to let the people know 
I don't agree with what happened. What, ha what happened, I think, is illegal. And by gosh, I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is, and I'm willing to pay for a lawsuit to see if this is indeed constitutional, if it's statutorial, to see if it's right and proper. And for people to take personal offense because they've done something at a table that they thought was right, and somebody takes it to a lawsuit, well, that's just really, it's too bad. Because it's not personal, it's business. So that being said, it's not a sin. It's not a sin or a horrible thing to have a lawsuit against the city. It's your final recourse to try to get justice for the people, for all the people. So that's why some people <coughs> file lawsuits, because they think something has transpired that is not according to the law, and they're willing to put their money where their mouth is. Now, as far as what we saw happen tonight, where this council had enough votes to rubber stamp the gross overspending that happened last year. Um, I realize that one of my co colleagues is tell tells you over and over, oh, it was only this a little bit of money or it was not that, that, that much money. I urge anyone who is interested or who cares about it at all to come to the city hall and perhaps ask our city clerk or the finance director or file an FOIA and get the budget and see exactly which departments overspent and exactly how much they overspent. And I'll tell you right now, the mayor's office overspent their budget that this table approved by over $34,000. The police department overspent their budget, which is about a $900,000 budget for police for a town of 2,000 people with people who are coming here to have vacations and have fun and they're getting tickets and they're going home and they're telling their friends and we wonder why tourism is dropping. Then we have the fire and EMS that overspent their budget by almost $64,000. We have non-departmental that spent their, overspent their budget by almost $100,000. Right there is a quarter of a million dollars, and I haven't even started talking to you about the street department, about public works, about the parks and transit, and the, whoever, whoever else overspent, but that was probably close to another quarter, thousand, quarter million dollars. Now, friends... We can see, we can go around our town, we can see our streets are in poor repair. We can see our walls are in poor repair, falling down all over the place. We know that our water pipes are in poor repair, and we're probably buying almost twice as much water as is being delivered to each home and each business. So we're, we're paying twice as much for water as we actually should probably be paying. We're having tr problems down at the, uh, uh, at the uh, wastewater. wastewater plant as well. So there was, a, there was probably right around a half a million dollars that was spent on who knows what. I don't know if we needed it. I don't know if we didn't need it. I don't know if I won't even go into what the Secret Service spend their money on. But so but bottom line is we don't know what money was spent on for sure. And perhaps it was needed and perhaps it wasn't. But the mayor arbitrarily, unilaterally, approved spending that we did that we as a group did not approve we as a group are supposed to look out for the taxpayers money where some of us are trying to look out for your money if we'd have had that half roughly half million dollars that was overspent by different departments that would have gone a long way to repaving one of our streets would have gone a long way to uh, excuse you mr. DeVito would have gone a long way to uh, replacing some pipes would have gone a long way to uh, repairing some uh, uh, walls and so that's why this distresses me because the money we're trying to look out for is your money it's the taxpayers money we're trying to say okay you can spend this much on this and this much on that and then if we have any extra money maybe we can tuck it away and uh, uh, repair some walls repair some streets which are sadly neglected and have been for at least a couple of administrations you can look around the town and see it it's obvious so all I'm saying is people I'm really sorry I'm really sorry that this table and the mayor have not been more fiscally responsible and, and looking out for, for our infrastructure and for the things that matter to not only the residents, but the visitors who come here. In the past couple of years, I've had several visitors come here to visit me and say, God, Laney, your town's really falling apart, isn't it? I'm like, well, yeah, it is. So I'm sorry, people. I'm sorry. We'll all try to do better, and hopefully my, either my colleagues will try to do better or you'll vote in somebody else. Thank you. Mr. Raphael. Yes, congratulations, Ms. Lindblad, and I'd like to uh, 
thank Cornerstone Bank on their centennial year for uh, donating $100,000 to various local organizations around. It didn't get much press in the paper because they didn't buy advertising. Thank you. Okay. Now, it's my turn. <clears throat> Regarding the issue of the mid-year budget resolution for 2011, I believe the budget issue was the budget was submitted to or the resolution was sent to the council in August, and I'll give you a date here in just a second. August the 18th, 2011. Item number four was the date for the mid-year budget review. Um, of course, in thrown in amongst all of that was the question about outsourcing finance and doing this with finance and doing that with finance, and we were without a, uh, a finance director at that point because uh, certain members of the council didn't trust Ms. Uh, Ms. Klein, as stated in the council meetings. So the fact that uh, they didn't get this and they didn't get that from the finance department. Well, Ms. Klein was the finance department, but with the berating that she received uh, openly at the council meetings, um, she decided to resign as the, as the finance director. Um, the budget resolution stayed in effect on the agenda and was postponed, 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 all the way up until November. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, November. Uh, I believe it was in the November 2011 meeting. It was made and seconded. The resolution was actually read for discussion purposes only, and motion carried 6 0 0. Um, we did talk about looking into a voluntary contribution for the cemetery, which was given back to the cemetery to do and get on the ballot for November. I don't know where they're at with that. Um, Ms. Balance objected to the general fund line item for retirement. And Mr. Pennell objected to voting with someone without someone from finance there to answer questions. At that time, remember, we didn't have a finance director, nor did they trust the one that was the acting finance director. Ms. Balance moved to postpone. Again, Mr. Kirkpatrick seconded. Motion carried 4 to 0 with Mr. Brennan and Mr. Vito voting no. At the December 1st meeting, the mid-year budget resolution was deleted from the agenda during budget setting. And I won't go into who did it. It doesn't matter. So it was deleted completely off the agenda. It's not been spoken of since up until here lately, which has now become, I guess, a criminal issue from what we're being told. <clears throat> uh, let me just give you a few facts and figures. Since no one has actually said what the money was spent on, let me refresh your memory. For the fire department, maintenance and operation to the tune of $12,552 for repeated breakdowns on old ambulances and pump issues with the fire department and fire truck. Travel education induced $2,921 because they lost two personnel and incurred unbudgeted training expenses for those two individuals. A replacement. Excuse me. No, sir. Unless you're leaving. No, I'll be back. Okay. Telephone was $955. No recent light item adjustments. Payment for internet costs went up. Utilities, $779. We had a hard winter. It's hard to budget for those. Professional other services was $1,750, increased call volume, increased in higher billing costs for professional services. Uh, small equipment purchases, $11,778, in which we did receive a FEMA grant for $80,000 to cover those and other purchases. Salaries and wages, $7,257, overtime and third out callback costs. Coverage for loss of two employees required payouts. Salaries and wages for EMS overtime, $19,085. Increased call volumes, frequent 30-out callback. 
coverage for lost employees, coverage while new employees gone to fire and EMS training academies, which they are required to do by law, and correctly budgeted overtime based on full-time employees pay period. Uh, supplies operating in office, $2,807, increased medical <coughs> supply and shipping costs, higher run volume, use more consumables. The fire department cost from what Chief gave Chief uh, Williams gave me was $59,584. <clears throat> Somebody's thumping. Please stop. Uh, Chief Hyatt stated that in June 2011 we had a strong storm, violent storm, which did take out an HVAC system and damaged one of the pumps in the wastewater lift station. The HVAC unit was repaired at a cost of $1,995.08, and the, the lift station was repaired for $5,828.14, for a total of $7,823.22. Couldn't find any other ones. I don't know where the other numbers came from. In regards to uh, transit, there's this federal and state money. And let's see, let's go back to Dwayne's now. Oh, here it is. All right. Mr. Dwayne Allen, the Public Works Director, stated that his major cost was the landslide, was to the tune of, I believe, one hundred and seventy or one hundred and eighty thousand dollars which we were getting payments back from FEMA, but it was never reconciled in the, the uh, major budget resolution. Um, he has been spending the money he has available for repair on water and sewer issues. If anyone's been on Spring and Center Street and listened to all the grappling and moaning and groaning, uh, they can see that it was repaired. You can also see that repaired down Center Street was a sewer line. Uh, and another tune of 2000. Now, these are not all itemized, so I want everybody to think that the, the majority of the so called quarter million dollars was about 170, 180,000, or 160,000 um, dollars. Trying to keep our waste treatment plant up, uh, disposable, the biosolids has gone up, as well as the maintenance equipment. Uh, we try to keep a spare parts inventory on hand to alleviate some of that problem, but we cannot because we have to keep using it because we operate 24-7. <clears throat> so I don't know where all the other numbers came from because nobody ever talked about it. Uh, yes, indeed, we did go over budget, but that was keep the city up and running, um, contrary to what was talked about here at the table. Now, granted, if we could had a crystal ball and we could see that none of this stuff was going to happen, we could stay within budget. But it doesn't work that way in city government. It just does not. It doesn't work that way in county government. It doesn't work that way in state government. It doesn't work that way in federal government. We have to go with what we've got. If we do not, we have to shut the doors. And we will not do that to our citizens. So with that, on a brighter side, I would also like to state that our sales tax collection for June through April was up 12.32 cents per cent. 12.32%, and parking revenue from June, is it June or January? Yeah. January, April was up 17.6%. So from the reports we're getting from everybody, from all the departments, transit's up, CAPC's up, everybody's up. Now, with that, let's go to some events. May the 16th is the last day of school, so parents get ready. May the 18th, the White Street Walk. May the 19th, Art Wall Unveiling at 2 p.m. May the 19th, the Garden Tour. May the, the 19th through the 22nd, Miata's in the Ozarks. May the 20th, Books in Bloom. May the 26th, Mustang Show at Pine Mountain Jamboree. May the 19th, Eurek Springs Bike Show at Ozark Mountain Hoedown. Uh, May the 28th, City offices closed due to Memorial Day. Music in the park every weekend. Uh, I'll be going out of town this week, so Mr. Barry, you have the helm. I'll be leaving in the morning. I'll be back. Bye.
next Tuesday. Thank you very much. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you.